Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. So we are going to discuss about the classifications of motors used in electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle. In the previous class we have been discussed about what are the parts of a DC motor and how to what are the advantages of a motor if you remove the commutator and brushes. If you are if you want you can watch in the previous video now let's try to classify these uh, motors based upon their commutators so first one is uh, we are going to have commutator motors as well as commutator less motors uh, so let's try to classify so first one we have the original motor drives used in electric vehicle so these are the original motor drive so from this motor drive we are going to have the motors which has commutator so what is meant by commutator already you have been understand so this is nothing but an dc motor where it consists of the upper part is the stator and the center part is nothing but the rotor which rotates this is stator so this may be made up of a winding which is called as a field winding and this is made up a winding which is called as a armature winding so armature is nothing but what is meant by an armature armature is nothing but uh, is like a set of conductors so this is made up of a set of conductors so here to this field winding here in this we are using a permanent magnet or you can use an electromagnet and you have the water so if you want to run this machine as an motor we want to give the supply to the we have to give the supply like this and this supply has to reach the carbon pressures and through carbon pressures it has to go to the commutator therefore the armature or set of conductors will act like an electromagnet and in the stator part you have an electromagnet due to interaction of these two magnetic field a torque is produced in the case of an dc motor but when you come to this uh, commutator this is the purpose of commutator we had already discussed uh, what are the advantages we are going to get uh, if you remove the commutator here so these are all the advantages what you are going to get higher efficiency uh, higher power density and low operating cost more life and less maintenance now let's try to classify them step by step so the commutator motors uh, we are going to see and these are once again classified into self excited dc motors so they are excited of the own so these are self excited motors and one more classification is a separately excited separately excited i think you are very clear about this self excitation and separately excitation so here this uh, field winding and armature winding are excited at a time with the help of common dc supply they are connected in parallel that's called self excitation but here the excitation to the field winding is excited with the help of an uh, auxiliary dc supply with the help of an auxiliary dc supply we are going to excite our machines okay so this will act like an field winding f f f and the armature winding we are going to excite with once again with another supply okay so like this side of excitations are called separately excited so this winding will act like an field winding and this winding will act like an armature winding so armature part is there in rotor part field winding is there in stator part so if you combine this to this and if you combine this to this then it acts like an a self excited dc shunt motor okay so this is all about uh, self excited in the self excited again we are going to have two classification first classification is uh, how you connect uh, the field winding to the armature it is called as a shunt field winding and how you connect this field winding to the armature we connect in series uh, that's called shunt self excited dc motor series self excited dc motor coming to the separately excited dc motor here also we have two types of uh, classification so separately excited is nothing but uh, uh, separately we are going to excite this called field excitation separately field is excited and you can use directly an electromagnet or you can use uh, a dc supply 
to excite our field with the help of an DC supply. This is called electromagnet. Or if you want to produce the magnetic flux, we can directly use uh, permanent magnets. So the purpose of permanent magnets uh, is directly to produce a uh, magnetic flux phi. So if you use permanent magnet also, what it is going to do? It is going to produce uh, the magnetic flux phi. If you use electromagnet also, it will try to produce the magnetic field. But permanent magnet, uh, it has more flux density. So the strength of magnetic field is higher in the case of an separate in the case of an permanent magnet. So this is how you uh, directly connect the field winding to the armature. If you connect in parallel, it's called parallel DC shunt motor self excited. If you connect this field winding in series, then it is called as a series connected. So this is all about uh, the self excited separately excited motors. Now coming to the commutator. So up till date we used uh, the DC supply. We had given to the commutator positive and negative. So through brushes it goes to the commutator and current which is nothing but available across the armature and automatically it performs its action of a DC motor. Now we need to identify the components uh, which is nothing but commutatorless motor. So the one is commutator and next classification is uh, commutatorless. Commutator less DC motors. So what are the advantages of this commutator less DC motor is? So if you remove the commutators and carbon brushes, they offer higher efficiency. They offer high power density. What is power density? Watt per metric cube. For a given small area, high amount of power it can deliver automatically the weight of the, I mean weight, I mean sorry not the weight, the size of DC motor decreases. and it has lower operating cost. Why? Because there is no carbon brush, automatically the maintenance cost is reducing, automatically the operating cost is also reducing. And this commutator motors uh, have more reliability, so they have more life. Why? Because there is no carbon brushes. So therefore, they have more reliability and since there is no carbon brushes, the maintenance is minimum. There is no maintenance. Why? Because uh, if you buy the motor, it will work for 20 years to 30 years. Uh, there is no maintenance and more life is offered, low operating cost, high power density, size is also smaller and higher efficiency. So these are all the advantage of a motor if you don't use uh, the commutator. Let's try to check out what are those commutator less motors. So under this first one is uh, induction motor. Already we know this uh, induction motors. So we will give the supply to the stator. So you have the stator and you have the rotor okay so you will give the three phase supply to the stator and by the process of rotating magnetic field the rotor will rotate so here in this induction motor again you are going to have two types uh, where this is nothing but a squirrel gauge rotor so already you have studied all these basics squirrel cage is one kind of uh, rotor and next one is uh, slip ring so with the help of uh, end rings of slip ring rotor by using any of these two rotor will connect to the rotor and supply three phase supply is given to the stator of an three phase induction motor which produces an rotating magnetic field and rotor is like a squirrel gauge or slip ring automatically as per faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction with the induction principle, the rotor also will try to rotate. So that is here, you can see here there is no carbon brushes, there is no commutator. So these types of motors are called commutatorless motors. And coming to the next one, you have synchronous motors. So next type of motors are nothing but synchronous motors. So what is this synchronous motor? Here also you have two parts. So you have this like uh, the synchronous motor is reverse to that of an DC motor. So in the DC motor you have rotor and you have the stator. Okay. So here the rotor acts like an armature winding and stator carries a winding where it is called field winding. So the reverse of this DC motor parts is nothing but the synchronous motor. So at the center you have a rotor, at the outer surface you have the stator. 
So now the rotor is made up of reverse. So stator and rotor parts are reverse. The rotor is nothing but it consists of which winding now? Field winding and stator consists of which winding? Armature winding. So to this field winding, the field winding is uh, like this. So to this field winding, so to this field winding, we have to give the DC supply. So automatically this will get excited and magnetic flux is produced across the field winding or you can replace this directly with permanent magnet. So that is all about uh, the synchronous motor. The reverse of a DC motor components uh, is nothing but uh, the synchronous motor which rotates with uh, synchronous speed and these motors also have to excite the stator and you have to excite the rotor. That's why these types of motor are called as uh, double fed induction motor. I mean these are called double fed. So we are feeding the supply to the stator as well as the rotor. So it's called uh, you have to feed the supply to stator as well as rotor. That's called double fed motors. Double fed motors. Next one here in the synchronous motors also we have two classification. The first classification is uh, salient pole and next one is uh, non salient pole type. In salient pole type you have projections and non salient pole it is like a wound rotor. So if you want to see the difference, you can see here. Salient pole and non-salient pole. So how to identify the differences? This is very simple. So The salient pole and non salient pole behavior or the structure I am going to show now. So, this is all about the salient pole and non salient pole. So, here you can see the parts in detail. Already told we have two parts one is so you have stator part as well as the rotor part. So already I told to this rotor part we have the field winding. So this is completely the rotor part. To this rotor part what are going to have? So this you can see this salient pole the poles are projecting in nature. If the poles are projecting in nature then these sort of rotors are called salient pole rotors are projecting pole rotors. own rotor as you can see here the rotor is cylindrical in nature therefore these sort of rotors are called cylindrical rotors or non salient pole type of rotor. So to all this uh, synchronous machine we have to give the supply to the stator. So here where you are going to give the supply we are giving the supply to which winding? So we are giving the supply to the uh, armature winding. So we are giving the supply to the armature winding through the armature conductors. So automatically so this is called the different parts and this is called uh, AC supply, this is called yoke and this is called stator core where you have armature winding and these are called as uh, the winding slots to insert uh, the armature winding and next come to here, these are the two rotors, to the rotor what you have, to the rotor we have the field winding, so you have to give the field winding to the rotor, so it's nothing but a rotor field winding, so through slip rings and carbon, I mean through brushes and slip ring we have to give the supply to the rotors, okay. And it's nothing but uh, the base. This is all about uh, the synchronous motor. And next one, we have next category of motors. The next category of motors is nothing but permanent magnet brushless motors. Permanent magnet brushless motor. This also like an DC motor. You can see here in this DC motor also we have already discussed we have two parts okay 
so as already discussed we have the rotor here and to the top of the rotor you have the stator and this rotor is made up of armature winding and this stator is made up of field winding so now what we are going to do here is we are going to analyze these parts of this brushless dc motor so now this is like normal motor but when you come to an uh, induction type the parts are going to reverse so when you take a uh, ceiling fan type okay so which is like uh, a ceiling fan type bl dc motor so here at the center you have the stator and at the outer you have the rotor so and we will give the supply only to the stator so in the stator what we are going to have we are going to have in the stator the field winding and to the rotor we are going to have the armature winding okay so here what happens is uh, the stator and rotor part are reversed and here uh, we will place we will place this uh, rotor inside and the stator will throw it at outside so you can see here so as soon as you are throwing here at the outer you are going to have the stator part and you are having the rotor part just you are changing those uh, parts in the case of a uh, ceiling fan so here you are going to have the stator so here stator what kind of winding you have to use field winding okay so this field winding is replaced with uh, permanent magnets and this rotor you are directly having an armature so this is how the parts get shuffled depending upon the application now let's try to see the diagram then you can understand better okay so when you come here here we are going to have the difference between PMSM, I mean permanent magnet, I mean uh, wheel DC motors. So, when you come here, you can see what are the different parts we have in this uh, system. Uh, first one is uh, we have brush DC motor, brushless DC motor. So, this is nothing but uh, BL DC motor. So, brushed means already we discussed this is nothing but uh, armature. Okay, armature. This armature is nothing but a rotor and this is nothing but a stator. Okay, so on this armature, this rotor we are going to have the armature windings and the stator we are going to have the field windings. How to give the supply is through brushes, through commutator it has to go, it has to go to the field which is nothing but here the field winding is nothing but an electromagnet. So, here the type of excitation is DC supply and this will act like an electromagnet. So, you have to give the supply to the brushes as positive and negative supply. This goes to the brushes and goes to the commutator and resultantly it will be available in the uh, stator part and in the armature we are directly giving the DC supply this gets excited. Okay? So, that is how this is stator and rotor. But now how we are going to solve it is. So, now we are having the stator as well as rotor. So, here the field winding we are going to make like an producing the flux with the help of a permanent magnets. Okay. So, the stator part we are going to provide permanent magnets in the stator part and when you come to the rotor part you have the armature. So, on the rotating shaft we are going to keep some hall sensors. With the help of hall sensor we are detecting uh, we are uh, exciting the winding of the armature winding. This is that's why this type of motors are called brushless DC motors. This is like a normal industrial grade motors. So this will be reversed in the case of an uh, induction motor. In the case of an uh, ceiling fan motors. When you come to this uh, ceiling fan motor, we are going to have the parts like this. Okay. So, these are the parts of an BLDC ceiling fan. So, already we discussed what we are going to have. 
generally we'll be having the rotor and stator okay so rotor basically what i told you require armature winding and stator you require pill winding so now here this outer part will act like an a rotor and the part which is stationary will act like an a stator so here you are having the stator windings okay so the stator winding you are going to have the armature winding okay so on the stator now we are going to have which winding armature winding on the rotor you are going to have the field winding just they are reversed so to develop like this okay so in the rotor you are going to have field winding and this field winding you are going to make it as a permanent magnets and permanent using we are going to produce the flux so the parts are shuffled so which are used as a stator and rotor the parts are shuffled here and on the rotor you are going to have an permanent magnets here so you can see all these are the permanent magnets this is a permanent magnet all the rotor is made up of which magnet permanent magnet rather than using electromagnet we are using a permanent magnets and coming to the stator so you have the winding on the stator what you are going to have on the stator you are going to have generally you have to have which winding field winding but we are keeping the armature winding there so therefore i can say the build is a motor is similar to that of the construction of an synchronous motor in this case but actually original construction is like this so nothing is going to change you are going to have the this is nothing but how you use this application of this build is motor this is this build is motor you are having uh, the same armature which is nothing but acts like an rotor and stator acts like an field winding so but here the field winding is replaced with permanent magnet but here the armature winding uh, is nothing but uh, made up of uh, winding which has a uh, all effect sensors okay so this is how we are shuffling so this construction this also an bldc motor but for the application of a ceiling fan okay so you can see here very simple let's try to take this as an example where you can understand it so here the stator part and rotor parts are reversed so generally for the rotor you need to have armature winding but for the here the rotor you are having which winding which winding field winding and this field winding is not an electromagnet this is made up of permanent magnets to produce constant flux but when you come to the stator part stator part we want what we need to have field winding but here we are having an armature winding so what is meant by armature is is nothing but a set of conductors and this construction we are having for an synchronous motor in the case of a ceiling fan application hope you are able to understand the classification of bill dc motors and restless dc motors okay so next coming to the next category of motors so the next category of the motors is we are going to have an reluctance motors used for electric vehicle applications reluctance motor so reluctance motor means it offers a magnetic resistance motors and we have srm motors switched reluctance motors so reluctance is nothing but opposition to magnetic so opposition of magnetic properties is called as a reluctance okay so it's like similar to an resistance magnetic opposition and we are going to have permanent magnet hybrid motors also so permanent magnet hybrid motors all these are like uh, there is no commutator so these are called commutator less motors if you want to have a revision you can have a small revision so there are two types of uh, motors one is uh, commutator motors which is nothing but self excited shunt motor self excited series motor separately excited motors in separate excited we are going to excite the field winding separately and it can directly replace with an permanent magnet and when you come to the commutator less motors there are two types of motors one is uh, induction motor which is nothing but these are two types of rotor spiral gauge rotor and slip ring rotor and you have the synchronous motor so synchronous motor is nothing but reverse to the construction of an dc motor the parts are reversed okay so therefore coming to the next one the synchronous motor has two types of pole one is uh, salient pole and non salient pole 
since the poles are projecting they are called salient pole the poles are closed is called non salient so coming to the brushless dc motor here it is similar to construction of an uh, parts of an dc motor so armature you have rotor you have armature and stator you have the field winding but when you come to the original wheel dc motor in the, in the case of ceiling fan application we have to change the parts so stator we have to make with uh, so stator you have to make with armature winding and rotor you have to use an field winding is nothing but the construction is similar to that of an synchronous motor so and the next type of motor is a switch reluctance motor and so reluctance means it's like magnetic opposition and permanent magnet hybrid motors so this is all about the classification of commutator motors and cumulator less motors if you feel the content is useful please like and share with your friends and give you a valuable comments uh, which will so you, if you have any doubts let me know in comment section which will help us to do more videos uh, so please try to promote these sort of uh, free channels to the students uh, for the benefit of the students uh, those who are studying electric vehicles so please extend your cooperation in sub, if you are watching this content the first time please subscribe and share with your friends and try to grab more subscribers those actually need and knowledge thank you for watching viewers obediently from so we'll meet in the next video of different types of motors thank you for watching